War Eagle, War Report family, it's your boy C-Dub, and we have a great show for you guys tonight. Tonight, we're going to preview this week's SEC matchups for Week 10, and of course, we take a close look at the Auburn-Texas A&M matchup, and we're going to give our predictions as well. So guys, sit back, get your weight up, because tonight, we enter the War Room. You are, you now, are now listening, listening to, to The War the Report. War Report. Wednesday, Wednesday night, night war, war room. Brought to Brought you by, by Eagle, everyone. War Eagle. Happy Wednesday. Hope everyone is doing great. Thanks for tuning in to the latest Wednesday Night War Room brought to you by our good friends at AuburnSports.com. For the latest in the recruiting and all news regarding Auburn athletics, you need to check out AuburnSports.com. They'll get you covered on all of the latest intel. Also, shout out to our War Report family. Guys, help us by sharing this video, our live videos on social media, be sure to use hashtag get your weight up, helps other people to find our content and we can find other people as well. Now, Mike G, for those who are listening and watching live or even on the replay, what do they need to become, please, sir? Become an insider. Shout out to our guy, David, in the comment section right now. He just became an insider, so he has officially gotten his weight up. You can get your weight up too for $5.99. Go to our YouTube front page. Look for that join button. You won't see it on an iPhone, but that doesn't mean you can't become an insider. You just have to do it from a computer. Your insider perks will translate over. Now, why do you want to become an insider? Well, listen, we do a little thing called watch the film. Uh, so I'm going to go back and plug one we have from a little. This is our guy, Devin Aroma, should do. He, he did a wide receiver film study with us a few weeks ago. This is insider only if you want more content like this. Become an insider so you can get access to that segment. We just, uh, Caesar and I did the uh, Ole Miss watch the film last night. It was a ton of fun with ourselves. We went through every single play minus all the terrible special teams plays that we had. Now, as, as well as getting access to watch the film, we're also giving away tickets to our insiders, guys. This is something we've done for every single home game and sometimes twice. Two tickets to every home game. Mississippi State is our next home game, but coming insider, that's going to be an insider-only raffle. So we take that list, we draw it random, and we send two people to the game on the war report. So for some of you that won, it was your first Auburn home game ever. We love being a part of that experience. We want you to have that on us. Tonight we're giving away an AU T-shirt. That's not your normal AU. That's our version of it that doesn't get us sued. But we'd love to be able to give this to you guys. This comes – Courtesy of our guy, Walt Taylor. That's the owner of GWT2 Energy Consulting Services. He sponsors these. So hashtag get your weight up in the comments. You guys know the drill to get entered for this AU drawing. At the end of the live stream, around the hour mark, we're going to draw. Somebody's going to win. You got to be here. You got to be present to win, though, because we need to see a shout out in the comments. Other than that, listen, we want to give a shout out, special shout out to our sponsor at BUSR. Uh, sign up for an account if you bet once a year or twice a day. BUSR.com forward slash report to help support us. You can support us by supporting our sponsors. And last but not least, we're live on podcasts. So go check us out on Podbean, SoundCloud, Apple, Spotify. We're everywhere. We are climbing the podcast charts. Thanks to you guys at home supporting us. Indeed. Indeed. Let's go ahead and get into it. Some big news yesterday. College football playoff rankings were mm -hmm. released. And Auburn cracked the top 15, coming in at 13, just one spot ahead of the mm -hmm. opponent. We're going to be previewing Texas A&M. Great place for Auburn to be in year one of the Harson era. We talked about it. Mike G and I talked about it on uh, Blacker B's Locked on Auburn podcast for War Report Wednesdays. Mm -hmm. Be sure to check that out. Shout out to Zach Blacker, be a good friend of the show. So you heard our thoughts initially. We can go late last, but be will. How are you feeling about where Auburn currently stands in the in, in the inaugural release of the college football playoff? 
I am of the mindset that it is useless to get worked up about anything until all the games are played. We are going to play. We have the toughest schedule remaining, according to Pro Football Focus. We play uh, at least two teams that are very well favored, and then because they beat Bama and Bama because everybody loves Bama. So there's nothing to worry about. If we beat them, we would get a chance to face Georgia. You're telling me we're going to beat the unbeatable team as it stands right now that beat us, which kind of sort of would negate the loss to us because we would go from losing at home to winning on a neutral field, which is the most fair circumstances that could exist. If that's what we do, some people seem to think we would be left out as a two loss team if we were to run the table. That is absurd. You can't love those teams and then keep us out. They they would have put us in in 2017 if we were able to complete the deal, and they will put us in this year. So our standing is completely irrelevant because we have – at Mississippi State's not even bad. I think they would probably strengthen us still. We've, we've got too many good teams on the schedule. I'm not worried. I'm a little pissed for Cincinnati. We've talked about this, how I feel about Cincinnati versus anybody else, or Wake for that matter. But that's the system we're in, I understand it. But as far as us – I don't care. Who cares? It doesn't matter yet. Mike G, you've been talking about Cincinnati and how you felt like they were going to be kind of screwed. Uh, as a fact, that was a what did you see? That, you actually said that re- did that recently this past mm-hmm. Sunday. So now that the rankings are released, how you feel? They're screwed. There's zero way they're getting in this playoff. <laughs> There's no way they're getting in. They brought them in at six. And when you look at who's ranked ahead of them, the winner of the Big Ten is either going to be Mich- Michigan State or Ohio State. Um, Michigan so, could still get in. They, it's still possible for Michigan to win. Yeah. Uh, I mean, that's the least likely of the, of the circumstances at this point. But, like, yeah. Michigan State, Ohio State wins. The only way the Big Ten doesn't get their champion in is if they blow it in the Big Ten championship game against what is a pathetic other division right now so i'm i'm counting on the big 10 champ 10 champion getting in the sec champion gets in if it's georgia then the sec probably has one team in if it's anybody but georgia two teams get in because georgia i i don't i can't i'm short of losing a regular season game and losing in the sec championship game i don't see a scenario where they get left out if they get beat by a one loss bama or two loss auburn they're still in now, at least two spots left. You, t- tell me who Cincinnati's going to get in over in this scenario. They already got Oregon at four if they if they went out. Who's who's left? They're, they're telling you right now what they think about that win over Notre Dame versus what everybody else has done so far. Yeah. And everybody else has more juice left on their schedule than Cincinnati. So it would have to be utter and complete chaos for Cincinnati to get in. The Big Ten would have to miss it somehow. Oklahoma, who likely will win out, is more likely to jump Cincinnati with their remaining schedule than Cincinnati is to do anything to prove to this committee that they belong higher than six. So they're not in control of their own destiny because they already played their toughest game and they they think that they're six. They need other people in front of them to really colossally – Fumble just meltdown. Just yeah. have a meltdown. Right. Yeah. I mean, this is why we need to expand the playoff. Now, I'm not saying that they're not deserving. I'm not making a judgment on whether they're deserving. I'm just saying I thought they were going to be screwed. Now, as far as Auburn is concerned, that we're right where we should be at 13. We're yeah. in the yeah. perfect position because there is no some people, uh, some of my uh my my cohorts on Twitter were a little insulted at the ranking. I was like, no, they jumped us over Texas AM. Right. Texas A&M arguably has the more impressive win, although their losses are not as impressive. They're terrible. Oh, yeah, right. right? Um, however, we can prove it. Like B said, Mississippi State, this committee ranked Mississippi State 17 in the initial rankings. So left on our schedule, we got number 14, Texas A&M, 17, Mississippi State, number two, Alabama and potentially number one overall Georgia in the SEC championship game. If you win that, I mean, who's we, we'd have to close with four straight top 25 wins. Yeah. <laughs> it's insane. Of course we're going to go. If we would, but that's cart before the horse. 
at this point. We just need to handle business. And then after, if I said after, <laughs> guess who I'm going to pick? <laughs> if we handle business, <laughs> if we handle business this weekend, you do have to start talking about Auburn as a serious contender in the West. But what a storyline for Brian Harson in year one. I, I think it's amazing that it's November and we're sitting here talking and having this discussion. Yeah. This feels great. This is the hope that Alan yeah. Green paid $21 million for us to have. Thanks. Right. Thanks, Uncle Alan. We well, appreciate it. <laughs> he, he didn't pay it. He, he just wrote a check. Come on, come but on, yeah. Yeah. yeah you know. He got things going. But no, we appreciate that. We he definitely paid, he paid a ridicule. <laughs> That's for sure. He did. Yeah. Indeed, indeed, man. But we got lots to talk about because that matchup is on the way. Let's also start by just, you know, talking about this week ahead and these predictions. But before we get into that, let's take a look at where we stand so far through nine weeks. Mm. So I went three and one. My G went three and one. B, B didn't have a he, he, he broke five hundred. Uh, I went three and one. I'm 63 and 15 on the year. Mike G is about to hit the 20 ball in the L column. Oh, 59 and 19. I should have I should have taken a chance on Florida. I knew I could have been four and zero. I, I just <laughs> felt like that was their last chance to lose a game. Florida actually played them tough defensively through two quarters, and then just what a luxury it must be to have Georgia's defense, where you could just do anything offensively for half a game yeah. and still be in control. Yeah. Like wow. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. They were never in it though. 66 and 12 B. I get 62 and 16. I took a chance with Vandy. We I didn't get Ike's picks, do we? Did yeah, he give us his he, picks he, for this? Yeah, he's still got time. He's still got he's time. He still got time. He can yeah, give we'll us log him. Yeah, as long as we we'll, get him we'll for Saturday. Him. We'll you know? definitely yeah. get his picks. But interesting to see how this is going to go uh with our week 10 predictions. Let's go ahead and talk about it and who we got coming up on this slate. Hold on, hold on, wait, Caesar. Before we get started, um, shout out to Cleveland Brown. He says, "Go Braves!" Got to acknowledge that the Bravos won the World Series last night. So, congratulations yeah. to them. I know a lot of you guys were super interested in that. Um, and thank you, David. Allen, welcome for joining the community. Welcome, welcome, welcome. <laughs> Let's get into it, Florida. Goes on the road to South Carolina. You see the line there. They're not giving South Carolina much of a chance to win. No chance. Mike G, you already got that look. You already no, got that. You already I'm got that. I'm watching B. I'm watching B because B looks like he knows something that we don't know. Yeah, he don't know nothing. Florida Is this wins. line crazy? The line's crazy. But, okay, so here's the thing, though. Okay. We were kind of impressed with South Carolina by how they competed early in the season. Mm -hmm. They had a couple injuries that completely derailed that, as evidenced by Bandy being able to really be up on them late. They had to come back and kick a field goal late to win that game against Vandy. Um, South Carolina isn't as well put together as they were four weeks ago, but we know Florida is not that good. I'm I'm thinking the spread, right? The spread is what I'm thinking about in my head. I'm like, okay. I don't know what would I do because Florida actually, Dan Mullen is getting just killed in the media right now. They're asking him about recruiting, and he's like, oh, we don't talk about recruiting during the season. Like, no, you always need to be talking, thinking, breathing, recruiting, dude, because it's the SEC. And didn't they remove him about? from the rest of media this week? Yeah, he didn't take no more questions. <laughs> Oh man, so um I don't so here here's really the question I have, and it's kind of not about the pick, but it is too. What does the team think about Dan Mullen? I've seen teams quit on coaches maybe four times in the last 10 years or so. Once was definitely in 2012. Oh, for sure. That happened. Um, I don't mean they went out there and mailed it in, I mean they weren't playing for that coach anymore. That coach didn't do anything to bring that team together to motivate that team. And the results on the field showed it. And as evidenced by the turnaround the next year, there was talent there that was there in 2012 that just had a reason to play all of a sudden. And um, I've seen that. Uh, we're kind of seeing it this year with LSU. People have just said, no, nah, I'm, I'm not going to come back. Yeah, I'm hurt. I'm transfer. So what exactly – 
does that team feel about Dan Mullen? That's what I want to know. If they have mailed it in, if they have quit on Dan Mullen, at least for the year, the South Carolina could definitely cover easily. And they could also sneak this. And that would be the the bottom falling out for Dan Mullen in at Florida. But if it's just been a rough stretch because they don't have the guy at quarterback, like if Dan Mullen says, I'm going to shake it up. No more Emory Jones. Forget Emory Jones. Richardson, you're out there. You're my guy. If he makes that switch, quits playing roulette, and makes a decisive decision about what he's going to do at that position, let that energize the rest of the team, then not only does Florida win, but they, they could actually cover because South Carolina's got a lot of problems right now. Mm. So I'm I'm back and forth on where I want to go with it. But I'm going to pick mm, – it's really hard to pick Florida after how they've been looking, man. I don't listen defensively. They, they look really good against Georgia defensively for a whole two quarters. They did. Yeah, they did. They yeah. did. Yeah. So, but the problem, but really, the problem for Florida this year has not be surprisingly has not been defense. It's been no. that offense of theirs. Well, LSU did run on them kind of embarrassingly, but mm. yeah, outside but, of that game, they've been solid on defense. Yeah, yeah. The they they have been just terrible like they've had moments where they just they just was a turnover machine Mm -hmm. it just yeah that that, that's just their issues on the offensive side of the ball and mullen is an offensive guy so that's that's highly problematic for him he needs a quarterback you know richardson just is not super great neither one of them is great richardson's a little more He's got a little more juice than Emory Jones, but Emory Jones's limitations throwing downfield are so obvious. And, he got hurt so direct. I think he, he got, got hurt. hurt. He got hurt at the end. I of thought the he game. just pulled him. They put. Oh, was it just a pull? I thought he got hurt. I don't know. They put in Jones. Uh-huh. Yeah, I turned it off. I'm not gonna lie to you. Uh, <laughs> I ain't watching the whole game. Uh, listen, before we before we go on on this, uh, Levi Merrick, <laughs> how how do you get a green name? <laughs> Great question. <laughs> I love this question. This is the most amazing question we've ever gotten. Uh, become an insider. Five ninety nine on our <laughs> YouTube homepage. <laughs> Uh, you'll see the join button there. If you're on an iPhone, you won't see it, Levi. But that's how you get a green name. It means that you're part of the greatest Auburn community on the internet. So get yourself a green name. There you I'm go. Gonna start using it. <laughs> All right. So so, 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 we so, what, so what's it going to be? I got Florida. I, I don't I don't know about the spread though. I don't I don't I don't know if Florida covers. They may yeah. cover. I mean, South Carolina's not good, dude. I and wouldn't I pick Florida them to cover. Either. Yeah. I wouldn't pick them to. Co- I don't think I picked them to cover, but I am going to pick Florida to win only because. So here's something I do: I play out. If this happened, how bad would this be for everybody involved? And I think mm. about Dan Mulling losing to South Carolina. Yeah. After the way his season has gone thus far, and then mm. I think all that noise becomes unbearable. Mm. You know how Gus was good for winning that one game that that kind of quieted it down a little bit. Yeah, the worst game to lose. He wouldn't lose that one. He would win a game we had no business. He'd lose the game we had no business losing, but it was in the midst of a win or two that was okay. Like we beat Texas A and M in twenty eighteen, but we lost to Tennessee. Mm -hmm. I think Mullen wins this. I'm gonna pick Florida. He wins it because he's not ready to give up those checks yet. Yeah, he's got something to prove, and I think he sticks around through this game to prove it. So I'm, I'm taking Florida. Yeah. Everything be said in Florida. Yeah, uh, I just text me and he said, uh, put him down for South Carolina. Seriously. Yeah. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that's what I read. Yep. South Carolina. He wants Southie. Okay. Man, you can't just I'm, be I'm making a, stuff up. I'm going to text, <laughs> text Ike later on that one. I don't know about that one. Let me check the group chat. Let me check the group chat. Lying on his I'm, bed. I'm, I'm only three behind. He picks talking about it. Terrible liar. <laughs> Watch them pull him in. <laughs> All right. Another game that's, uh, I mean, Georgia. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. We're going to have to spend a bunch of time here at Georgia. Uh, they look pretty Dude, unstoppable. Look at this. this you, uh, th- all right, people in the chat, help me out. When was the last time this game was not on CBS? This is going to be on ESPN yeah, at bad. six o'clock. Right, it's pretty right. bad. That's pretty when bad. When was the last but, time this game was not on CBS? That's mm-hmm. just how my. That's how far LSU has fallen. 
Coach, oh, man. Oof, what a fall from glory in two years. Yikes. Yeah, that's the Chiswick treatment. I mean, that it's is worse. The- that's worse. Chiswick, because at least was about football. He's bringing his girlfriends to practice. You know, <laughs> he's just doing all kind of foolishness. Man, I don't, I don't know. Yikes. I, 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 I'm i sick of I think Alabama covers as well, too. I mean, the, the wheels are kind of falling off. I still like Max Johnson. Uh, Miles Brennan entered the transport portal this week. Yeah, he said yeah. he's done. He said he's done, and I think that yeah. that is a direct result of Coach O being out. Nobody's going to want to have to deal with what's coming next. They are rum- rumoring that Mel Tucker might actually be a candidate for this job. Uh, so we'll see what direction they decide to go with that. But, uh, yeah, I'm picking mm. Bama. I think Bama covers, too. I think this gets ugly, honestly. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah, I'm going I'm to have to agree with you there. Uh want to hit some Super Chats real quick. Stuart. Donald appreciate. He says he predicts Auburn 21 13 this weekend, but I don't know how confident I am. <laughs> Still suffering from GTS, GTSD. See what you did there. Um, we'll talk more about, we'll talk, definitely talk more about this because it was so interesting is that I'm starting to have this renewed confidence in the fact that I think Auburn has a chance to win every game they play. Mm-hmm. Right. And that's improvement in year one under Harson. I, mm-hmm. I've never, I didn't feel that way under Gus. Uh, Lawrence actually super chatted us, asked New Curtain Truesdale. I guess he was referring to uh, what we was talking about the with Florida, Florida transfers. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Um, they ran down there. Well, they got a chance to see the field, or at least one of them Man. did. I, saw I, mean, Tru- I think I saw Truesdale out there against this, Georgia. If you, were, if you ran out of this program in the spring, and now Auburn's sitting. Let's say Auburn wins this weekend. How do you feel? Hmm. How do you feel as a player who transferred out of a program that immediately jumped in to the national conversation in year one? Are you regretting it? Welp. Didn't that what somebody said? Welp. Yeah. Like oh I mean, yeah. Well, like oh, like yeah. they just jumped ship. Like we were gonna go down. And people forgot that this was still a really talented team. If we give Gus credit for anything, he did recruit. Yeah, he did recruit. Now Harson has to get credit for the guys that he went out and brought in, right? Mm-hmm. And the coaches as well, Tony Fair. Uh, mm-hmm. And and let's 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 be real. If not for the addition of T.J. Finley, we would be sitting here at five and three instead of six and two. Oh, it might be worse because I don't be know worse. if I don't know if Bo gets the bump. Um, if y'all follow us on Twitter, I'm I'm controlling that handle most of the time. And the credit before somebody put made a graphic before the benching and after the benching and the market improvement in Bo Nix's numbers downfield under pressure, mm-hmm. all metrics going sky high since he was benched. And we knew that that would have never happened under Gus. If, if TJ Finley had a reason to go anywhere, it wouldn't have been here. I don't think he wanted to play in a system that wasn't going to prepare him for the NFL because he's that confident in himself. Right. We weren't going to be taken seriously. Um, Gus wasn't all of a sudden going to learn how to actually develop a quarterback. He had done it in the years. It mm-hmm. got done here, not just on the field, not just X's and O's, but the motivation. He gave Bo Nix exactly what he needed to start becoming a better quarterback physically and mentally and there's no way that tj finley going somewhere else that we get the same result here if somebody wasn't behind bo to push him so i it wouldn't just be georgia state it would have been i don't think we yeah on this trajectory yeah let's give harson credit for bringing him in if only for that one quarter if that's his if that is his 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 legacy in auburn history Mm-hmm. He came in for for a quarter in two minutes and saved us from a loss to Georgia State and a disaster. Season where we ultimately, come back and make it to the SEC championship game. You got to give Harson credit for that, man. He went out and got him <sighs> a backup quarterback that could come in there and do that. So I don't want to mm-hmm. underscore how well Bo is playing or, or, or under under my how Bo is playing great, but this is a different feeling on this season if we lose that game. That's all yeah, I'm saying for sure. So give Harson Lawrence- credit. Lawrence also mentioned DJ Williams, Mark Anthony Richards, <laughs> UCF, and the, DJ Williams went to Richards Williams went to FSU, right? Playing. He did, and they're doing terrible. Mm-hmm. Mark Anthony Richards isn't even playing. The only person who's left our program 
and actually went to what you can argue is greener pastures was well joiner. Mm. He went to Michigan State. They're doing good right now. They're doing pretty good. Oh, yeah. but that was now. Good granted, that. he's behind this amazing running back who shares the last same last name as me, no relation. But mm-hmm. he's up in Michigan State, and they're doing well. Thanks. He's Thanks. about the only transfer I know who's doing well who left Auburn. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, Walt says hashtag Iron Bowl at night start the movement. <laughs> we might begin it. We might begin the night Iron Bowl this year. Interesting. Well, you know, if, if we keep on our trajectory, they're going to put us in the afternoon slot. The, uh, the CBS a lot, yeah, yeah, I would think so. Yeah. CBS, I is would going think so. One. Yeah, man. So, yeah, uh, let's let's get back. Let's let's resume some of these picks. And and before we do that, definitely want to shout out our betting sponsor. We already did prior, uh, but BUSR, they're our betting sponsor. They're the reason we have these lines the way that we do, guys. If you bet at all at any moment, guys, head on over to BUSR dot com forward slash report set up an account with them if you bet often or sparingly if you bet bet with busr support us by supporting those who support the war report so please be sure to do that guys let's get back into these predictions shall we the next game up is liberty mike is cheesing why you cheesing mike how you feel about this one what you think Oh, we get to see Malik Willis against SEC competition. Mm-hmm. We yeah. get to see this. You're talking about a potential first round pick in Malik Willis. For our pro football focus is really high on him. Now, we all know famously he left our program so that our current quarterback could take the starting job. And you know, when these kids leave our program, I still want to see them do well. I hope that it's the right decision for them. He talked a little bit about how he didn't take the job seriously when he was here. Uh, now he, I'm just big of him to take take the blame on that. I put a lot of I put a lot of the attitudes on coaching. Um, but, however, it's going to be interesting to see him against SEC competition. I think that they don't have to win, but he can really make a statement about his draftability in this game against other uh, potential draft picks. Now, Ole Miss is a little depleted. So could Malik Willis come in here and just have a Heisman moment against, not that he's going to win the Heisman, but you know, you understand the type of game mm-hmm. to have a Heisman moment against Ole Miss? I'm tempted this line isn't crazy. It's it's not. It's perfect, actually. Yeah, this, this is, is a prom- this, this is a dangerous game. Yeah, this is a tempting. Miss. They're tempting you to take liberty in the points. Yeah, oh, this is a man. dangerous what do, game. What do, for what do I Ole think? Miss. What do I think here? Right, and, and uh, I'm going to pick Ole Miss, but I'm going to tell you, I will not be upset to be wrong about this one. You know, I picked Georgia last week, so I can't do anything crazy this week. Uh, you picked, uh, yeah, okay, yeah, you picked Florida could, over Georgia. Yeah, yeah. I could, uh, yeah, I could have, could have made up again. I could have been four and zero if I just did not go out on a limb there. But I'm going to pick Ole Miss in this one. I'll be watching. I'm going to watch this game. It's gonna be, it's gonna be a fun one to watch. I'm going. I'm, I'm going. I'm going Ole Miss as well. It's gonna be a tight one, though. I think. It's going to be tighter than than we would expect. Um, something tells me Hugh Freeze is really going to get up for this game. Yeah, and have mean, those guys. Yeah, something man. tells me Hugh Freeze yeah, really man. wants this. Oh, uh, this is dude. Oh, this is. Ooh, it's going to be all offense. But man, yeah, yeah, this game could be all offense. Be what? Uh, be what? Uh, what do you think? <sighs> I'm sitting here trying to look up these team stats for Liberty because we know that Ole Miss can rush the ball. They just couldn't rush it against us. Mm -hmm. But Liberty is giving up 133 yards per game on the season rushing, which is not bad. And they played a couple of FBS schools. um, Excuse me, a couple power five schools. They're only giving up 17.6 points per game. Wow. 317 yards per game. <laughs> and then we just gave them a great blueprint on how to defend 
I'm so tempted. I'm so tempted. Oh man. Uh, Big Blue just said, uh, Ike just texted in a Liberty. <laughs> <laughs> Shout he out, did. Big Blue. He did. He did text oh, me. Man. Here, so here's the thing. We know how we know that they're beat up. I, w- I want to know now because I didn't check before the show what the scouting report says on Ole Miss right now. Who's practicing? Who's not? You know what I'm saying? Is is Corral out there with a the, with the cast on? Is, has he been on the sideline? Has the other guy been running with the ones? Oh man. Ooh, okay. Lane Kiffin. I'm I you know what? I am going to finally let's be clear. Put some Corral's things. gonna have some good drugs in him. He's gonna be ready to go. I think so because now you can't again. I'm I'm thinking what happens if Lane Kiffin loses not only embarrassingly to Alabama, um uh definitively to us, but then loses to <laughs> Liberty the next week. I can't imagine a world where that happens. I don't think we need. I think we need uh, Ole Miss to be. Yeah, there. yeah, because everybody's all. I think we need Ole Miss to be. Injuries. Yeah. Only reason we beat them is because they were they were so depleted. Right. And I'm I'm like strength and conditioning. Don't, don't like, you still? But you still got to win. Like, yeah, what yeah. if we lose? Then what? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I'm like, listen, it's not our fault. They they didn't get their weight up in the off season. That's that's part of it. Game yeah. eight, game nine, week ten, wherever we're at. Right. And you're and, and other teams are getting injured and we're getting healthier. Yeah. Don't y'all think some of the shine starts to come off of Lane Kiffin if he loses this game? Yeah, yeah definitely. definitely. It low key is already starting to lose his shine the way he's been going for it on fourth and not converting. Yeah. Yeah, but you could chalk that up to analytics, right? Even though I I agree that it's a bad decision. <laughs> And as a coach, you make that decision. It's a bad decision. But he's got a guy back there to blame. That's why that guy's back there. We think it's because he's telling Lane the information. No, it's just like, listen, man, I need a face back here to be the face of my failure because I don't want people to blame me for it. It was a long face at times during that game, too. Yeah, it was Mm -hmm. a a confused-looking face. (laughs) Mm -hmm. I'm going to take Ole Miss, man. I'm going to take Ole Miss because the alternative to, to Ole Miss winning is that Lane Kiffin starts to turn back into a pumpkin. Right when a bunch of big jobs are opening up, and I don't think I don't think he's gonna let that happen. Yeah. If nothing else, he is going to preserve his market value because Lane Kiffin is a smart man. He might not be the best coach, but he's a smart dude. So I'm gonna take okay. Ole Miss to win. Okay. Mike's got Ole Miss. Yeah, I got Ole Miss. Yeah, I mm, got Ole Miss. Don't let me down. <laughs> That's gonna be an interesting game. Another interesting game is Tennessee, which is a pick'em game. At Kentucky. Oh, okay. Now, yeah. the football power index is liking Tennessee here. As am I. <sighs> They're liking Tennessee. Now, I got off the Kentucky train last week. Yeah, you did. And they ended up losing to Mississippi State. I picked Mississippi State. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking Kentucky gets further exposed this week, and I'm going Tennessee. I love what Josh Heupel is doing. I really do. At the beginning of the season, I, I to me, after the first few games, even when they weren't starting Hendon Hooker, something looked different about the system that they were running to me. I liked what I saw with their passing game. I just thought, I was like, hmm, this looks like a, a different look, Tennessee. It took them some games to put it together, but they've been competitive, man. I agree. And, and losing to Mississippi State is not a good look for Kentucky. I think Tennessee can be competitive in this one. I like them. I like Tennessee by field goal as time expires. Listen, I thought Tennessee. <laughs> you call it that. that you gonna use that one for the first time this season? Yeah, yep. That's All it. Right. It, happens, it happens every year. <laughs> it happens every year. All right. You just gotta Tennessee. find the right game for it. You gotta pick mm-hmm. the right game. Okay. This is it. So this this is is listen, game. listen. I thought Tennessee had what it what it took to actually knock off Ole Miss several weeks back, and they were in that game. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm telling you, they're um, trying to look. Yeah, Kentucky's on a losing streak, licking their wounds. They back home. I'm not sure if they turned the ball over as much as they did against Mississippi State, but I'm not sure if they got what it takes to stop Tennessee. I think I'm going to go Tennessee here as well. Mm -hmm. I think I'm going to go Tennessee as well. I want to go Tennessee as well. This is don't, such. This is truly a pick game. Don't be fooled by that little number out out beside Kentucky. <laughs> it's easy to see that. I know that. I know that. 
But you got to think Kentucky got to stop the bleeding at some point. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm still gonna go. I'm still gonna go Tennessee. I'm gonna go Tennessee. Who you got, B? Kentucky hurt me last week. They hurt me last week, man. Before the day started, early that morning, I was putting together the betting with B Will picks on Twitter at 10 a.m. and I put together a little line of my a little uh, parlay of my own. Mm-hmm. I had fifty dollars for Michigan State to cover, for Vanderbilt to cover, for Georgia to cover. For Auburn to cover and for Kentucky to cover. I would have turned my 50 bucks into about 1300 bucks. Kentucky did not cover. I was sad. I'm still kind of sad about it, to be honest with you. <laughs> what did it do, though? What did it do? They turned the ball over four times, including three picks from the QB and a lost fumble. Turning the ball over four times, they only gave up 31 points. I want you to think about this. As much as Leach chucks the ball around, you score 31 points. We scored 31 points, and we basically punted for an entire half last week against Ole Miss. So that lets you know what the feast and famine has to be when you're getting the ball that much. Our defense gave us the ball repeatedly in the second half against Ole Miss, and we found a way to stall drives out. Their defense kept them in the game. They're going to be at home now. Their defense plays better at home. Kentucky is a rah-rah momentum type team, but those turnovers are not exclusive to away. They turned the ball over a jillion times against Chattanooga and won by a touchdown. But there's something about a team doing it and knowing that they gave the game away, and I think they overcorrect this weekend. I am not on the Kentucky bandwagon anymore as a team. I think that kind of uh, that Uncle Mo is not on the sideline no more. Mm. But I do think they win this. Being back at home is a big reason why. I think they're a much better home team. So I say can do you. Kentucky Come wins on. this game. Y'all, y'all close in on me, man. I, I, game picked Vanderbilt. I, I picked Vanderbilt last week. It burned me. So I'm only three ahead of C, but I think Kentucky wins this. It's going to be two after this week, sir. <laughs> we will see. Our, speaking of Mississippi State, they go on the road against Arkansas. Another intriguing matchup here. Another intriguing matchup here. Mm. Should we be fooled by this ranking here? Mm. Oh, I'm man. leaning Arkansas here. I'm oh. leaning Arkansas. As much as I want Mississippi State to pull this one out. Listen, I will say this about Mississippi State. They have the third ranked rush defense in the SEC. Uh-huh. Do they? Yes. Yes, they do. Well, I guess they do. Yeah. They're pretty good against the run. Yeah, Tie for second. So, what does Arkansas like to do? Run the ball. They do like to run it. But they also got a bye. Yeah, but Mississippi State also played a bunch of terrible running teams as well, too. Well, they played Kentucky last week, and they they were a pretty good running team. They were giving the ball up. So, I mean, Vandy, La Tech, NC State, Memphis, like, I don't know. Yeah, that's true. That's true. I I don't know if that's for real. Ah, man. I'm I'm not sure. I'm 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 gonna go. I'm gonna go Arky here. I'm gonna go Arky here. Yeah, I'm definitely taking Mississippi State. Mm. I'm gonna go Arky. They're trending up. I like Arkansas. They're definitely, they're definitely trending up. But Arkansas oh, they are trending up. They're, they're trending still up. A, Arkansas is still a very dangerous team. Yeah, I like Arkansas. And it's not because I, this is a, this is a pick em. If there is anything, yeah. this is a pick em. This is the most pick em, pick em of the year to me. Yeah. Yeah. I like it. Because like you it. have this no is idea. A dangerous game for us. Who knows State. how Arkansas is recovering after losing three straight having a little cupcake game, and then they got to buy. So we really don't know what their mental mind state is. Physically, are they healthy? 
Yeah, I'm going to pick Arkansas just because I, I do think Sam Pittman is a good coach mm-hmm. and he will be able to rally the troops for this one, at least for this one coming off the bye. So Arkansas. I okay. think that defense, too, is built for what Mississippi State likes to do. They like to play three down linemen and, and guys playing in. The, yeah, I like Arkansas. I like Arkansas. Yeah. I think Barry That's Odom has a good game plan for what for what they do. So we'll I see. Agree. We'll see. Uh, listen, if you're watching this on replay, do us a favor. Please do this to us a favor. We want to hear from you guys. Who are your picks? Who are some upsets you got this week? Let us know for sure in the comments below. Guys, this is a reminder that you are watching the Wednesday Night War Room. We pause to acknowledge our sponsors. The War Report's Wednesday Night War Room is brought to you by our generous sponsors. AuburnSports.com. For news and notes on all things Auburn sports, head over to AuburnSports.com. Our betting partner, BUSR. Bet with confidence at BUSR.com slash report. University Ace Hardware, located at 2101 East University Drive in Auburn, Alabama, right across the street from the Auburn Mall and next to the movie theater. For all of your hardware needs, Ace is the place. And our giveaway sponsor, GWT2 Energy. If you want the best in the business at Restaurant Logistics, check out our friends at GWT2Energy.com. Uh, listen, guys, become an insider. If you're in the chat right now and your name is not green, you can make it green by hitting the join button and joining our community. Uh, I see a Georgia fan in the chat. Uh, believe it or not, we actually do have fans from other schools who are members of our channel and just like coming to talk football with other serious football fans here at the War Report. So everybody's welcome. If you're on an iPhone, you won't see that join button. You just have to get on a computer, hit join, choose insider and become part of one of the greatest Auburn Internet communities to ever exist. We are partnered with the Lee County Humane Society to save puppies. Hashtag save all the puppies. We want you to join that. You can go to the about section of our YouTube channel and find a link to our GoFundMe. We give 50 cents on every dollar to the Lee County Humane Society to save puppies. I've actually started a Twitter hashtag, hashtag save all the puppies. We are we are tagging Tim Cook every single day until Tim Cook responds and donates to our cause. Uh, it's starting to gain some steam here. People are tagging me like crazy on Twitter. Um, you know, uh, the great thing about having a community is, is that no one person has to do all the heavy lifting. However, Tim Cook can do all of our lifting and then some uh, pretty quickly. So we're trying to raise a lot of money for the Lee County Humane Society to help them save puppies. Uh, you know, again, uh, outside of Tim Cook, uh, everybody can make a difference. So no donation is too small. We appreciate everybody who joins in on that campaign. Uh, if you missed it at the top of the broadcast, giving away a T-shirt. Uh, so hashtag get your weight up in the comments right now. I got just a hundred people got over 400. And so I hope to get at least another hundred in before the end of the broadcast. We're going to draw here in about 15 minutes. So hashtag get your weight up in the comments to join uh, that giveaway. And we will uh, at the hour mark, give away a t-shirt to a lucky fan. Well, guys, let's, let's not, uh, let's go ahead and get into it. Let's go ahead and just talk about, what everyone came here to talk about. Mm. Number 13 goes on the road, and that's a typo there, against Texas A&M. Game info here is, of course, this is a 2.30 kickoff with CBS. Football Power Index is liking Texas A&M. 62.5% chance of winning the game. The line is actually four and a half, which is about a pick em game as well. And over and under, I believe, last time I checked, was 49. Uh, the series record, AM leads 6-5. to five, And, of course, we know the result last year. Uh, A&M won uh, 31-20 against Auburn. Let's see what happens this year. So, one of the things we want to talk about, we don't have the actual matchup side to side like we, like we normally do. We don't have a guest. But we do have some stats that I do want to talk about and just kind of highlighting some guys talking about the offensive side of the ball for Texas A&M. We know who we got on our side of the ball. Some people that 
I do want to mention is for the running backs, you got Devin A. Chain. Uh, you do have Isaiah Spiller. And Spiller so far has gained 761 yards on the ground. Right behind him, though, is A. Chain with 608. So a lot of people have talked about our one two punch. AM has a one two punch of their own. Mm. Now, we know what Auburn has been doing in terms of our rush defense. Um, actually, these two schools are pretty comparable in terms of rush defense. Hmm. Um, how do we feel about these two guys? Uh, they, are, they make up the big part of what they like to do on the ground. Uh, we had a very impressive showing last week against Ole Miss. Mike G, how do we feel about the rush defense versus the, the matchup of Isaiah Spiller and A-Chain? Uh, you know what? Outside of Georgia State for two quarters, nobody has really been able to run the ball on us super effectively. Uh, Georgia got going late in that game after our defense was kind of worn down from no offensive production. But this will be another strength on strength game. So with two running backs who were averaging over six yards a carry, six and seven respectively, uh, they're going to want to lean into that. Can we force them to do what they don't want to do? which is throw the ball a bunch with Calzada to stay in this game. Hmm. I think that we can. Now that we have Owen Papo back and Moultrie back on the field, it it completely changes the complexion of this one for me. So Hmm. I'm thinking, yeah, I like like the odds here with those two guys back in the lineup. Seeing Papo run around the field, and he's not even 100% yet, according to him. Right. So if he gets even a little healthier this week, you know, the emergence of Eku Leota, we are, you know, right up there, top five in the country, guys, in tackle for loss. You know, I think that there's a good chance that we slow their running game down enough that they feel like they have to throw the ball to keep up with us. And, and I, you know, with this quarter against this quarterback, I think that's a good thing. B, how are you feeling against uh, our, our rush defense versus the A&M running attack? I like our chances because we've got a lot of bodies up there. Um, the depth up front is really key. Um, I know that Burks could was kind of iffy to come back last week. And I don't think he got on the field last week. I'm not 100% sure. Yeah. But TD's back and Owen's back. And Wooden has still been playing out of his mind. Marcus Harris has been playing very well. Yeah. Um, Tony Fair has been – when we need to stop the run, man, there is no – coincidence that we got a guy that big to plug the middle and then we've been as as good against the run as we have been so it doesn't show up his stats because what he does is occupy space but he's doing the job so i like our depth up front and i think we actually hold them in check now what's in check that's what's gonna be my question for you like what 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 makes you concerned in terms of of yards a&m gets this much it makes you nervous What's what's the, um, what's the what's the what's the cutoff for you? I don't, okay, so here's the thing. I don't think it really comes down to how many yards they get. I think our offense is the single key to this game because if we get a lead, they have to throw. The run gets abandoned somewhat, and now they have to throw with a very mediocre quarterback. Jimbo has been able to God bless me I'm, i have to say something decent about him but well, i'll have my time soon i have to say plenty decent about him so he's a good offensive coordinator he's been able to get guys open and they've got a very good tight end and it worries me we'll that him. they might be able to put up points but listen lsu had Butte and max johnson's not a scrub 20 points Ole miss came in averaging some ungodly number of rush yards and attempts and 20 points so we can hold a team down which is part of the reason why rush running yards aren't the metric that that scare me. We have seen now, and everybody's Ooh. talked about how much it, it irks us to see us give up third downs, to see us see us give up a ten yard completion, a twelve yard completion, or a seven yard completion on third and five. Yeah, I get it. Nobody wants to see that, and it's bothersome. But when you're in the game and the other team only has twenty, your defense has done its job. So. I don't know if it looks like low yardage or it just looks like a bunch of field goals for them. But either way, I expect us to hold their offense in total down enough for our offense to win the game. Um, I would say 
75 yards or less for both running backs. Okay. Okay. So under 150 yards rushing. Mm-hmm. I think they I think they're gonna have to hold a running game in check. Um I think it may again they're they're kind of a, a lot like us. And if you get the running running game going, they're on it's gonna be difficult to stop them. So right. one of the things we've done a good job of is making teams, as Mike has alluded to this this year, is making teams one dimensional. We got to make AM lean on their passing game in this mm-hmm. game. Um for the challenges that we're going to have offensively, we can't allow AM to be comfortable just doing whatever they want to do. Right. Yeah. So I, I'm with you, B. I, I, I think we have to limit them to under 150 yards on the ground. Um, if they get to two over two, I'm worried about how this is looking. That means they're controlling the clock. Uh, that means our defense is out on the field a long time. Like those, mm-hmm. those things become very concerning. So uh, that's a, that's a definite before we move on and talk about the passing game of AM and our secondary and linebacking core. Let's go ahead and grab some super chats during herd guys. Y'all remember 2013 D Ford sack on Manziel and how that game launched us on a roll. Just saying a win Saturday for us is dangerous for others. Absolutely. You know what I'm? Yeah, I, I, I agree. I agree. also 100%. remember, man. I just remember the, uh, oof. I just remember the stiff arm heard all of, seen and heard all around the world man. in that game too. Who Sammy, that? Coates. Sammy Coates. <laughs> I have forgotten yeah. it until somebody retweeted uh, tweeted that Oof. and then we re- retweeted it. But oh, oh my, my live action! It was like oh, it was so beautiful to see a man throw oh, a grown man like that. Yeah, he yeah. he oh. yeah. Yeah, yeah, it was it was he, uh it was he little brother them. He was yeah. sure. Yeah. Uh Joey Kelsey uh, Ana beat a Bama team that didn't show up, then beat Missouri and South Carolina. Not impressed. We win 35 21. All right, I hear you. 35 21. Listen, I like that score. I'll take There's it. There's some validity to that though. Bama isn't they're number two in the polls, but I, I don't think they're the second best team in the nation. This isn't like other Bama teams. They're wearing the jersey and they got the logo, but this they are not that good. They are the mo- probably the most beatable Bama team they've they're had in the last yeah, years. By, by their standards, they're not that good. By a lot of everybody else's standards, they're still pretty damn good. I mean, like, yeah, they they would walk through the ACC in Pac-12, sure. Yeah, they they set the standard for good. So, right. like, or for great. So by their own standards, they're not that good, but they're still better than almost right. everybody. <laughs> right. They're really impressed with Bryce Young. Um, we have not done our picks yet. We actually just review we're previewing the Auburn and AM game. So you're just in time, Austin. We appreciate the super chat. Welcome, sir. Thank you, sir. Also, you. got another one down here. Walt. Are you holding teams 30 percent below their scoring average? That's key. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Our scoring defense is pretty good. Mm-hmm. It's pretty good. We're tight. We hey, we tighten up in the in the in the red zone there. So, <laughs> what's that? What, what you man. which one you had? This is right here. Let me close the man. Yes, <laughs> man, yes, yes, man. Yeah, he got. Lou I got my green. Ah, oh. welcome, <laughs> welcome, welcome, welcome. But in all serious, if our O line can own the trenches, followed by consistent Bo Nicks and a good rushing attack, can Auburn really run the table and win in Atlanta? Yeah, yeah. If we get all that, yes, yes, we can win any game we play if we get all that. Because that's yeah, really yeah. what we've been needing is a consistent Bo Nicks, a good rushing attack, good play on the O line. I mean, yeah. I mean, that's that's pretty much how we've won the past few games is that we've seen more consistency in those areas. So mm. no reason to believe we can't continue winning with what's left on our schedule. Yeah. All right. Now, guys, let's talk about AM's passing attack. All right. Zach Kozada. He's going to be throwing the guys like Jalen Weidemeyer. Weidemeyer. Mm. I guess I'm saying Weidemeyer. I think it's Weidemeyer. 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 Weidemeyer has like 353 yards receiving so far, four touchdowns. But we saw against South Carolina, he was a big part of their offense. They'll line him up as a receiver. They do a lot of different things with him. He's pretty dynamic in space. He's an athletic tight end. Um, Anaya Smith is kind of like a slot guy, speedy guy. He, I think he returns punts, I believe, mm-hmm. for them. So he's a pretty shifty guy, speed guy. He has 347 yards receiving on the season. But what I've noticed is that 
they like to throw the ball to their running backs out of the backfield. So mm-hmm. let's talk about the being the discipline of guys like Papo and Zacoby McClain playing in space and, and continuing to follow those running backs. Like how, how critical do you think the passing game or our pass defense is going to have to be uh, against A&M? Start with you, B. Yes, we have to worry about the pass defense. Um, because Wagermeyer is their best pass catcher, we may not have to – I think they're kind of suffering from what we were suffering from at the beginning of this year, meaning that they have some talent in the wide receiver room, but it's inexperienced. They're they're getting their legs, and they had another guy kind of starting to show up. I forgot his name. Um, but Wagermeyer is the only guy for every game I've seen for Texas A&M, whether they were winning it or losing it, he's popping off the screen. Now, he doesn't have a ton of yards, but he's the guy who it's a critical down, and I need these yards. His body is big, and he has some leaping ability. He's really like a big receiver out there, um, and he's crucial for them. So I have to imagine that unlike Penn State, where we went up there and they pulled a bunch of new stuff out the hat with personnel that they hadn't really used before, we know what this guy can do. Yeah, um, we, we know who they want to target. And we've also got some really good, uh, I would say, data based on the, the games that they've already played. I think we have an advantage in how we defend them because they have to do the best they can with the quarterback that they've got. It would have been like that if it was Haynes King out there. This is the first year. Inexperienced players. It was going to be Calzada's first year. It's going to be Haynes King's first year. They can't do too much. I'm going to call it dippity doo but. You, you can't go to advanced level QBing until you've actually hit, you know, the ground floor. And, and he's still on the ground floor, but the talent around him has protected him. For the first time in, I don't know, since I don't know who misses it, who uh, A&M has played that could actually defend the run well, because when they played a team that could defend the run, Mississippi State and Arkansas, when they were healthier, because their linebacker and safety got hurt and when we played them. When they played get teams who could defend the run, they got held down. That's a good point. I think we have the personnel to hold down that run and make everything else a little more difficult. Much like, and I don't know, Michael had to pull the advanced stats because he has those, but what is Calzada's percentage drop under pressure versus clean? It's terrible. It's terrible. First of all, his, his overall completion per, uh, completion percentage is terrible at 55%. When kept clean, yeah. he's, on, he's only he 63 Oh, He's only beautiful. 63%, which is just 1% lower than what Bo was last year under pressure. Yeah. I mean, we kept clean, 64%. We already know that's not good. Right. Bo right. has improved that stat for himself um, so far about 5% hmm. over last year. So he's 68% right now. Uh, his numbers took a hit uh, uh, since Georgia. Right. Correct. But we know that a lot of that is because of dropped passes. Right. Because his adjusted Correct. when kept clean is 79 percent. So Calzada's adjusted is 73, which is not bad. But under pressure, he drops off to 39 percent. He's thrown a pick in every game he's played in. Correct. Mm-hmm. Yes. Correct. And now so Bo, is, that- Bo is 39 percent as well, too. Uh, but that drop off is not unusual. Right. It's not unusual, but same as Corral. Corral was 38% under pressure. If you can get to him, then you've got a shot to make him do some things yeah. that are and not with, that he doesn't want to do. And we have done a really good job the last few games of getting to the quarterback, whether pressure or sacks. Mm-hmm. I think we're kind of we're rounding in the form at just the right time. I like our chances to defend them, giving them the yards because we know they're going to get the yards. We 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 have resigned ourselves. They're going to get the yards. But with a quarterback, and this is what's different about between Corral and a QB like Calzada, a QB like Calzada can be kept out of harm's way with a run game and with a big safe target like Weidermeyer. But give me that run game. Let me let me, let me take that run game up off you. Now you're a little nervous. Mm-hmm. Now it's yeah. a little different because I got some guys that are actually – foaming at the mouth td's last season he's been missing some games he needs to get those numbers up leona mm-hmm. hadn't really been out there as, as long honestly because last game he was out there behind td you don't think he wants to get out there and get those numbers up 
Ooh, Papo, man. He he rushes yeah. the passer. They send Papo. You don't think he want to get those numbers up? I think Leota's prime for a big game. Um he didn't do he didn't get a chance to do a lot against that type of like RPO. He kind of he kind of right. disappeared a little bit, but against this this team, I'm interested to see if he's able to mm-hmm. to kind of reintroduce himself to everybody on that offensive side of the ball. So do you think after watching how we defended Ole Miss and how they did the RPO, do you think we see any any of that? We know how Jimbo likes to call a game, but do you think we see a lot of uh, slants, them put guys in a slot, hoping that we play off of them? Do you think do you think we see some of that? To, mm, this, you need, this you need a quarterback that can deliver that that sort of ball consistently. When yeah. we reviewed right. the Ole Miss film, I was impressed with how – uh, yes. Corral through that sure. ball, mm-hmm. so it was it's it was it's like a catch and shoot kind of thing. He just would right. catch it, find the laces, fire it out there, mm-hmm. and he was throwing some darts in some really tight windows. Mm-hmm. I am not sure Calzada is that guy, right? I'm really not. So mm-hmm. again, looking at his numbers, I think you try to put the ball in his hands and see if he can beat you. And then, similarly, when I went back and looked at Texas A&M's film, this guy will throw some passes straight at you. Yes. Mm. And you just have to pick him off when he does. Mm. Put a little pressure on him, and then I I think we can turn him over at least twice in this game. Yeah. With a healthy Owen Papo and a healthy TD Moultrie, I think we can – interception, sack fumble. I so can see key, that easily. Key, key to this game, limit them on the run, get pressure on Calzada. Yeah, yeah. I think you got to get you got to get pressure. You got to put the game in his hands, man. Right. All the statistics say, don't let them run the ball. Make Calzada throw to beat you. And then what Derek Mason has been doing defensively has been a lot of just don't give up the big play. Keep it in front of you. For sure. Just keep it in front of you and wait on them to make a mistake. Right. Wait for your defensive line to get the big sack to force you know, a bad throw, and then you take advantage. But this is still an Auburn team that is top 20 in the nation in scoring defense. We're third in the SEC at 19 points a game. So while people are moving the ball, they're having a hard time finding the end zone once they get down there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, They really yeah. are. It's Georgia at 6.6 points per game. Uh, Texas A&M at 16 point something, and Auburn at 19 points. 16.6, I think. Yeah. And Auburn just under 20. Bama right behind us. So uh, this is a good opportunity. Defense, defensively, we have the horses to slow them down just enough. And right. conversely, if we can then put some pressure on them with our offense to have to try to keep up. This is what we did to Ole Miss last week. Yeah. Harson has repeatedly talked to guys about starting fast. we got to start fast on offense. And – we didn't do much in the second half offensively in terms of scoring, but they had such a good first half and they ended it on such a positive note. He called that last ha- that last drive of the first half the best drive they've had all year. Mm-hmm. He said that was our best drive of the year during the press conference when I asked during the press conference. So I think that if you can start fast again, especially on the road, now we're 4-0 at Kyle, Kyle Field, so we've had a lot of success there. But But still, this is a different year. If we can start fast, and put some pressure on them to get outside of their game plan to have to try to keep up. Our defense may be able to force some turnovers, and, and, and then we can play keep away in the fourth quarter. Okay, possibly. That's how I see this going. If we win, so so <laughs> that's 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 a And M's offense, our defense. We kind of talked about what we need to do to to have success there let's get to some super chats and then we'll get to our giveaway Corey weber says this team is coming together and you gets it done and we can't forget virginia double dribbled yes of course they they did. Did. thank you so tonight. much Corey, for our weekly reminder of that <laughs> that's why we got you here my friend thank you thank you sir thanks for the super chat also walt taylor is saying look kyle field is jordan hair west Hey, oh, I don't want to get too, there. I know. I don't want to get too cocky about it, though, because you're undefeated until you're not. We've been very <laughs> fortunate there. I've, That's how that works. Very fortunate. <laughs> so, like, I want to believe in that. But 
I mean, I've been impressed with the job that Jimbo Fisher has done with Texas A&M this year. He didn't let his season go off the rails early. Yeah. Then he then he <laughs> talked all that crap in the offseason about whooping Saban's ass and somehow did it. <laughs> so, <laughs> so this is uh, start, man. this is interesting. We're going to go down there and, and what a great opportunity to make a statement again on the road. So in one year, you will have gone into Baton Rouge on the road at Arkansas and in the Texas A&M and gotten the win. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Uh, Texas A&M, Riggerspoon, appreciate you. Texas A&M should be worried since Bo had a sly grin when asked about throwing to so many receivers. Makes it hard to defend. Uh, listen, I like the fact that we're spreading the ball around. Yeah, like, we don't man. have a we don't have a key receiver. It's like as much as I would love to have Seth Williams back and him throwing to him, I'm loving that Bo now has he's throwing to open guys. He's finding yeah. different guys, and as a defense, it keeps you honest. So yeah. I'm loving this about our offense, man. Especially I'm, the tight ends, finding the yeah. tight ends, mm -hmm. uh, the running Bo backs. Bo to Fromm was the best throw of the game. Yeah, that the audible, like he's quarterbacking Luke Deal. That the yeah the, was that the, the third Luke deal? deal? That was a Luke Deal. Now the From yeah. that was beautiful, the one to From because well, that was, was a play action. Bo just just dropped it in there for From beautiful Man. throw. But the Man. Luke Deal play, yes, he, he's making checks at the line mm -hmm. and just straight play action hit Luke Deal. Like I like what I'm seeing with this offense. Like you yeah. can't just key in on one person. And when you're doing that, we don't need perfection from him either. Yeah, right. it wasn't a perfect game, but it it was just a solid game. It was a really solid game from him where the receivers, for the most part, had a chance to catch the ball and make a play after the catch. Right. You know, the yeah. emergence of Landon King. I mean, there are weapons coming out there. If we could just somehow find a way to get Elijah Canyon on the field, please. I know. Oh, my I know. goodness. What, According to all reports, that's do? up to him, right? Yeah, like, it's on him. Offense, B man. Canyon has to figure out how to get Canyon on the field. Yeah. Michael McHugh, appreciate you. He's got his score. He's got a And M twenty four, Auburn thirteen. Hey, listen, I respect it. This game could go that way. It could really go that way with these two defenses. Something's yeah. got to give. I I still think Auburn needs to get the thirty to win the game. But I could see uh, I could see a world in which we don't get to 14 points in this game. I could see it. I could yeah. see it and still win it. I mean, I, I, yeah. I just think I think our defenses are that good. So, yeah. Are we going to give up 24 to them in that scenario? I'm not sure about that either. But like, listen, that's that's a that's a plausible score. It's not what perfect. is what is plausible is that we're giving away a T-shirt. So let's we go are. ahead. And, let's go ahead and get to that. Hey, listen, 140 get people your weight in up. this piece. Hashtag get your weight up. Yeah, 140 people in this piece. Let's get to 150 and then I'll hit draw. Hashtag get your weight up. Make sure you get your spelling up too because if you spell it wrong, you will not be entered in. <laughs> Shout out to Tony Allen who became just, just joined us as a new member. Welcome, hey, sir. Tony. Let's go, Tony. You guys are signing up. Uh, while, while I'm waiting on 150, let me tell you, this uh, this insider thing is not just an in-season thing. We have some off-season <laughs> surprises for you guys. And as our insider community grows, the more stuff we're making exclusive just for insiders. <laughs> that's where it goes. <laughs> so uh, we're, uh, we're we're buttoning, buttoning some things down. It's going to be really, really fun here in the off-season. We just hit 150. I'm going to hit. Hold on, aspect. hold on, hold on, hold on, Mike. Really? He gonna, he gonna <laughs> Already. See him, Pat. Have CM. not drawn yet. See him. Got people out of here. <laughs> okay, I'm hitting. I'm hitting it. Let's go. Let's go. Who's it gonna be this week? Watch it be the Georgia guy. <laughs> <laughs> we'll send it. We'll send it to him. He joined. James Barnett. Hey, Wait, oh, I think James has been a winner before. James, where you at? And tell us the truth. James, have you been a winner before? Have you won? Oh, no. I don't know. James, tell me about it. Is let he, me see. Is he here first? Yeah, let me go back to our raffle winners. I'm looking. I'm looking. No, I think maybe. No, I don't think. I think he's a winner. Won. James, okay. in the comments, holla at us. Oh, we're going to redraw at the one. James is usually here, though. Oh, nope. I've never won. <laughs> 
Okay. All there right. You we believe you. you. We, we believe because yeah, I, I'm looking here. I I, I don't see his name. Hey, so. listen. Business at the War Report. That's business at the War Report. Please email us your address and your T-shirt size. Don't forget the T-shirt size, or I'm sending you a schmedium. I will not send a follow-up email. Tell me your T-shirt size, or you get medium. a schmedium. That is S C H M E D I U L. Facts. Yes, that's that's exactly spelling. how you spell that. That's exactly right. how you spell that. Guys, let's talk about let's talk about our offense against their defense let me read off some stats for you all right talk about AM's defense they are 27th in the nation fourth in the sec in total defense allowing 329 yards per game they are 38th in the nation sixth in the sec in rush defense they're right behind auburn allowing 129 rush yards per game they're tied for 30th in the nation Sixth again in the SEC in pass defense, allowing right at 200 yards a game. Mm. But here's where here's where they're really impressive. They're tied for fourth in the country, second in the SEC in scoring defense, only allowing I think a 16.12 points a game. So what that tells me is that AM is pretty tough in the red zone as well. So the factor here is one of the things that has impressed me so far about our offense as it's been coming on is that we have been much more efficient and we're much more competent once we get in the red zone. Yes. And a lot of that is because we're starting to use Bo Nix a lot more in the running game. And what we noticed in the film review is people had to start respecting Sean uh, Shivers. Because we were using him on jet sweeps. We were using him in motion. And so the linebackers had to account for Shivers because we know how dangerous he is once he gets in open space. What all that did was create opportunity for Bo to run around the perimeter. Now, mm -hmm. not sure how much success we have running east to west on a defense like this. But what do you think? What are some things that you are expecting to see from this offense in the red zone? Should we find ourselves getting inside the 20? How does Auburn punch punch it in for six? My G. Uh well, let's let's talk about the play to Jarquez Hunter in the red zone to end mm. the second half, the first half. Great play. And it, it's really the opportunities have been there in the red zone. Now it seems like Bo is seeing the field, and that's a scary proposition for a lot of our uh teams remaining that we we have to play for defenses sec defenses left on our schedule <laughs> we have a lot of weapons that can be used and if he can if we can just get the ball down there like um a, a great example would be during the georgia game um the throw that he made to uh shanker that was they ruled it a drop but you know it was just a bad throw yeah. and jarquez was wide open underneath and it was an easier throw. And I think that the options have been there. What they've talked about has just been execution. Can we execute? You know, can we make the smartest play on the field? It looks like that's the direction we're trending right now. So I feel good about our red zone prospects. This was a bane of Auburn the last five or six years. For sure. For sure. Move the ball down the field, stall in the red zone. And yeah. I felt pretty confident in the offseason that, this was there was this would be something that Mike Bobo would improve quite a bit. I think through eight games, we can safely say he's improved it. Now, it was pretty much rock bottom as far as I'm concerned, but he is it, they look competent in the red zone. The opportunities have at least been there, and they're just focusing on execution. You know, so every week something happens, they go back, they look at the tape and say, Okay, what did we learn? And the next week, we see a more competent offense, and they're building on that every week. So, unfortunately for Texas A&M, on this trends up, they're running into us on on the way up. Mm. Yeah. What I saw against the first against Ole Miss in the first half was an offense that just looked very confident in what the plan was. Players looked like they were where they were supposed to be. They understood, you know, both seeing the field. Our tank looks confident. Come on, man. Jarquez is in there. We're using all the weapons. 
Yo, and then and then the X Factor Bo with his legs. Yeah, twice, twice he kept the ball, and so again, not overutilizing him. But uh, the rest of the the game plan was so efficient. When Bo does decide to keep it, it throws the defense for a complete loop. They forget yeah. about him. They forget that he's a sneaky good athlete. Right. So he ran in a couple touchdowns, and it just, I mean, there are a lot of potential offense, uh, options in the red zone. This is a good defense, so it's going to be a little tough sledding. It's going to take even better execution this week, but I feel really good about our red zone offense going into this one. Listen, some of the truest words I've seen in the comment section. Jason Hill, I think I'm going to have to agree with you. I, I'm, I'm, I don't, I don't want to see no fades. I don't want to see no fades. I really don't. I, I, yeah. I'm looking forward to us getting to throwing fades, but we're throwing it to shed. We're throwing it to like no more fades. I, yeah. I feel like we have there's more in our offense that we can call that doesn't have to be a fade. Be will. What's your thoughts about our red zone offense? Because to me, I think this may end up being potentially one of our university's hardware tools to the game when we review this, how we do in the red zone. How do you feel, Auburn? What can Auburn do in the red zone to get six instead of three? I think we've got a really good chance. Um, some of the best things that an offense and an offensive coordinator can do is to have some success doing a few things. What we've done with Shivers, uh, throwing the quick out, what we've done with Bo running the ball, and also um, what we've done with Tank. Uh, being able to run the ball, the tight end usage. We've seen tight ends get wide open for touchdowns. We've seen running backs be wide open in the in the end zone for touchdowns. We've seen Chavez make some some very good um, runs when he gets that ball in space like that. Mm -hmm. And a very good OC has a counter punch for when you stop those things that have worked for us. And we've seen some of those things. Like uh, see, like you mentioned, that quick out to, to Chavez. The linebackers are getting out there in a hurry because they see them and they know what that means. And that does nothing but clear up room for Bo to scamper right on into the end zone. And he's a great runner. He has great instincts as a runner with the ball in his hands. I don't see us not getting in into the end zone once we get into the red zone consistently. If there's anything we run into, I think it will be separation. Um, and maybe for the first time in a long time, real pressure on the quarterback coming from their defensive line. Um, Arkansas wasn't really a pressure team. They weren't getting a lot of pressure. They were holding down your pass yards, but it was mostly by coverage. They had a couple guys injured. It allowed us to move the ball. Um, Ole Miss didn't really get a lot of pressure on Bo. And I am so worried about our offensive line's performance, not because they haven't improved, but this will be the first time that we play a really staunch defensive front since Georgia. But also allow me to say all these opportunities were available against Georgia. And that's the best defense in the country and the league. If those windows were there against the best defense that we've seen that exist in college football, then you know absolutely those windows are going to be there against Texas A&M because Texas A&M isn't as good as Georgia. There is a 10-point differential in scoring margin between those two defenses. Mm. That is astronomical. We saw the best defense, and we saw drop passes and missed windows and throws and, and some guys wide open. It's there for us to get. Bobo's in the zone. The discipline has, has showed up on bowls in the wide receivers are not dropping balls guys yeah. they're getting it together like mike said we are trending up at the right time the question for me is how will we handle their pressure so when we're in the red zone and we're at that 10 and they send a little sneaky blitz but all the routes are quick and it's not you know throw it's, it's not backyard bow time because good defensive players will be in pursuit. As we saw when he tried that against Georgia, they stayed in their rush lanes and there was nowhere to go. I think Texas a and will be that prepared, but I also think those same windows that were available against Georgia will be available at, against a and But the maturation of this offense and these players means that the execution will be there and we will have the same type of opportunities, except this time we're going to execute 
and it's going to result in points. It's going to result in first downs, mm -hmm. and it's going to result in what should be a very impressive showing for our offense in the red zone and for the rest of the game. Let's get to some super chats real quick. Tony Allen, just who just joined, great show or damn. Let's get this dub. Yeah. I agree. Welcome. Thank you so much, sir, for that. I agree with you 100%. Also, did have a new member that we shouted out in the comment section. Chase, I'm not letting this go. Who lost the bet and who has to wear the Texas A&M yeah, shirt on yeah, Saturday? I, I can t-shirt order responsibilities. It has gone dark, but we are going to follow through on this bet, Chase. Um, hey, if you guys don't know, this is our guy, Chase H. Go check out his YouTube channel. Yeah, He's doing some interesting for sure. stuff. Yeah, sure. stuff. For sure. Actually, he just dropped a video this week about why Auburn beats A&M. Mm -hmm. Paraphrasing the title of it, but good video. Be sure to check that out. Shout out to you, Chase. Appreciate you, man. Hey, you know what? Um, if I could do a uh, a uh, sub rate for say, if you're if you're subscribed to the War Report, let's help Chase get to a thousand subs. Now, for sure, hear me out. Getting to a thousand subs is one of the hardest things to do on YouTube, flat out. Uh, you got you have to grind it out. I remember our run to a thousand was sudden. You know when Gus Gus Bus rolled out of town, but uh, I think Chase is sitting at like eight fifty. Guys, if you're watching this right now, click that second screen, go over to Chase's channel and hit. Let's get Chase to a thousand subs tonight, man. He's been grinding it out. He deserves it. We got you, Chase. All right, we're getting close to predictions. We've kind of talked about a little bit. Auburn wins if Mike G. Actually, you hold that because you, mm, I feel okay. a speech coming on for you. Auburn <laughs> wins if B will. <laughs> well, you know, the chat has been pressing me about a Jimbo rant, a Jimothy T. Fisher rant. And you know what? I I have to give him a little reprieve because he did what he said he would do. He said, we're going to kick his ass while he's still there. And he did it. Now, overtime winning quite kicking his ass. But, I mean, come on, man. It's, it's Bama. A win, a win is a win. It does not mean <laughs> that he is any better of a head coach. Okay. That he is not a shill. I <laughs> can't give him too much credit, right, B? I can't give him too much credit. See, you got him hyped up. See, we 2017. See, we beat Bama, and then we we extended the coach that we had no business extended. See, it's, it's, I've it's seen balance, this movie. Balance, before. Mike G. Balance. Mm -hmm. I've seen this movie before. See, I, I know what I'm looking at. I think we've got more evidence of, of who Jimbo Fisher is to way too much evidence to, uh, you know, get too hyped up about this Bama win. The worst Bama team in the last 10 years. And I'm not backing off of that. So um, <clears throat> Auburn wins if Jimbo is who I think he is. Straight up. He uh, has a, car, a, car, a used car salesman. He is a used car salesman. Okay. Um, that defense has done a lot of work for him. He doesn't coach defense. So I'm not giving him credit for the defense at all. Mm -hmm. He doesn't deserve that. He deserves credit for calling a really good game and finding out how to make a mediocre quarterback a little less terrible. He deserves that credit. But he's all, I've always given him credit as an OC. I've always given him that. Always. And that's what he is. I would prefer it if I never had to hear him talk and use words on a podium because I hate everything that comes out of his mouth. He just sounds slimy and, and like he's getting over on you, just talking. Just, it's just, ugh, it's, I don't like him. Auburn wins if Jimbo just turns back into a pumpkin. That's it. That's all we need him to do. We need him to smirk and and look real, real funny looking, and go talk to his quarterback. Hey man, we're going to do it again. going to scare. And then when he comes out there, he's going to throw a pick and give up the ball and a fumble. <laughs> and then we're going to win the game. And then Harson's going to have the serious face. And Jimbo's after it in his press conference, like, well, you know, we just went out there and we had to go and grab that. Yeah, but you lost. I'm loving that, these. That's I'm see. loving these impersonations. By the way, these are great. That, that, that's what that's what I need. See, well, thank you. Um. That's all we need to happen, honestly. It, if, if I'm being real, it, it comes down to our offense moving the ball and possessing the ball. That's really – that's the entire game. 
because I know that our defense would match up well with their offense because they want to run it. We're not going to let people run it. Their quarterback is scary. And for the first time decisively this season, we have a quarterback advantage. Based on the last two games I saw Bo Nix play, he has taken the next step mentally as a quarterback. Even if the second half it didn't always show up, we had a lot of miscues from a lot of people. Bo was one of those people. Um, the muff pump was one of those things. We had a drop. That was one thing. But for the first time in a long time, I feel like once the – Bo lets the ball go, and the camera pans to the ball in the air. There's actually going to be somebody <laughs> who's remotely open instead of just Seth Williams covered to death trying to catch the ball right. over people. Like, right. offense is looking we, – we look prepared. Like, people are in the right spot. They're getting the ball in better spots. Because of that confidence, our offense will do just enough to win this game. And because I don't think Jimbo can pull anything – extra special out of the hat because we can't use all those words on live broadcast. I think he turns back into a pumpkin. That's what I think happens. Mike G Auburn wins. If. Okay. So uh, I've been back and forth about whether what we're watching is real. I still am very hesitant based on the amount of culture change that needed to happen from the last regime to this one, you know, we had guys leave the program. Parson has gone on and on about just guys doing their job and practicing hard. He has stressed that they're going to play the guys who practice like their life is on the line. That's what we've seen, whether you're the most talented player or not. I argued with somebody uh, the other day about whether Seth Williams would have actually started in this Parson regime with some of his work mm. ethic issues right and probably not i mean listen this is a new day here now that we've seen eight games of this i think auburn wins if we just continue to build on what we did last week it's been a since arkansas arkansas i think we turned a corner now it's seemingly we turned a corner on old miss they came in and they just proved why it's real right. and if we can if, if we can win this game and bo can look like he has looked against Arkansas and Ole Miss that's on the road and at home mm -hmm. guys listen if 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 B can wear a I heart Jimothy t-shirt <laughs> I can wear a Bo Nix jersey I will purchase a Bo Nix jersey and wear it for the Iron Bowl right yeah. and I will 100% be a believer in his turnaround this is one of the most incredible turnaround stories in Auburn history for a player okay. statistically yeah agree but but you you to, to be a good player you have to do it consistently you just have to be consistent he doesn't have to win the Heisman but there's a talented enough team around him that you know uh the weight of expectation for juniors and seniors is is not only that you do your job but you make the people around you better yeah I'll do my job and I'll do half of your job Right, you just got to show up and try hard. Sure, Bo is that guy on this team. He's got to elevate his team. If if the SEC West is really, really, and you know, in the cards for us, he's got to elevate his game even further between now and the end of the season. Now, somebody may be at home and saying, "Mike, why are you putting all this pressure on Bo? There's no championships without pressure." Right. It's true. There's none. There's zero world where you're winning a championship without that kind of pressure. Harson is building different type guys that can handle that. Yeah. It's got to, it's I'm on this team. I'm telling you guys, it's got to start with both. It has to, the way they're calling plays and the way people are going to defend us. Now we went on black of these podcasts and I told them, I, I, people have been saying, you know, this offense runs through tank. I've heard commentators say that. I said, I don't think the offense runs through tank. I don't think this, tank, year, this, this year, yeah, tank does not 2021 has proven that it is not tank. Yeah. yeah, tank does not carry this offense, man. Bo Nix carries this offense. Yeah, we we go as he goes. For I've sure. seen eight games of it to realize it. There yeah. is because the, the defenses in our league are too talented to just say, and we don't have the offensive line to just say we're gonna line up and run it down your throat, right. We need you to be off balance. We need you to be uncertain about what we're going to do. 
right? So we got to outplay you. We got to outcoach you this year. This isn't one of those teams that just line up and smash you in the mouth. Yeah. Right? So we have to be able to play smart, man. And this is really the start of something great, not only for Auburn, but just for these players this year who st- who stayed and stuck it out with, with Brian Harson, mm-hmm. who said, Coach wants work, hard work, and I'm in. I'm signing up. Some guys tucked tail and ran. Bo State, Finley came in. He's been a model teammate from all that we've heard, right? The freshman Jarquez Hunter practiced hard and got his opportunity and has not wasted it. Xavion Capers is starting to see the field. Landon King is emerging. There are guys on this team who want it, and they want it bad. And this Saturday is a chance to go into somebody else's house and prove it. We talked about if you come into Jordan Hare, this is our house. This is a tough win. Well, guess what? When you are a mentally tough team, their house becomes your house too. And so far, since they joined the SEC, Kyle Field has. Keep it going. That's not some environment that we can't go in and overcome. Play sound assignment football. Do your job and just build on what we did last week. I think Brian Harson has this team focused. I don't think they're living in the shadows of last week's win. I think they forgot about that stuff Sunday afternoon. And Sunday night, it was right back to work. Let's get focused because now... One and no mentality has gotten us to this point. It's November, and we're seriously thinking about if we're going to be in the conversation for the SEC West. This was an mm-hmm. Auburn team that was picked to finish next to last in the conference. How many people look dumb now? So keep making these make all those game day idiots that, that keep picking against us every week. They're doing it again, guys. All I'm hearing again. all over YouTube, everywhere. The, the college football nerds, guys, oh, Texas a and OK, how much more do you need to see before we get a little buy in and stop acting like this is a lock? This team is improving. We are not the same team we were in week one. Show them who we are in week 10. We're coming. Get ready. Stone cold. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much uh, Mike G, my favorite on the War Report. Auburn wins if they're rushed for 250. I have to agree with that. Yeah, yeah. listen, man. That's a good day. A good Auburn day. wins definitely. Mine is if, if Auburn wins the turnover battle. They turn A and M over, and we protect the football. Uh, I, I think I think that's that's simply that for that. Jed, welcome. Hey, Jed, thank you. It was a big blue real quick. <laughs> Can we put this on a t shirt? <laughs> oh man, good. Yo, Bo's Hilarious. a good sport too. He put he put some version of that on a t shirt, right, and sold it for charity. Yeah, that was funny. So. All right, guys, predictions, predictions. Uh, Tony Allen says Mike got me extra hype. Let's go, man. Let's go. CBS, three thirty Eastern, two thirty Central. Let's go. I'm gonna be ready. So, so how? What's the final outcome? What's your score, Mike? Since you're ready, give me a score. What's yeah. what you got? I think it's right where it has been. I see this one in the same vein that I saw Ole Miss. Almost nailed that one. <laughs> so I'm going thirty-three. 18 Auburn. Mmm, 18. Mm. How they get that 18? Uh, Six field goals? Know, yeah, a bunch of field goals. <laughs> I don't know. However, somebody gets the 18, 15 points plus three. <laughs> Yo, Malcolm, that's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> that's hilarious. Those Jesus commercials. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny, man. Um, what's your, so you got? You said you had 33, 18, Mike. Well, yeah, let me just make it 20. 30, 33. I'll give them 20. 33 20. Because that's right at our average, man. We're 19 point something points per game. I think that we hold that. I have not seen any room, anything from this Texas AM defense 
our offense that tells me that they're going to go nuts on us, not even the way they did on Bama. We got Papo back. We got Moultrie back. You know, Ek- Eku Leota has come out of nowhere, you know, uh, you know, a smoke. And, and Jalen Simpson, man, I've been talking about him all year. When that, this kid, when he gets on the field, he makes plays. If we yeah. turn Calzada over tw- at least twice in this game, I can't see them getting more than 20 points, man. This is the defense that I thought they would be at the beginning of the year. B? I, wa- I want to touch on something that Mike said which is I do not want to touch on ball placement. I don't want to touch on balls. <laughs> they put in there. <laughs> we win. Oh, that's, that's that good touch on his balls. <laughs> yeah. But what I what I do want to mention is that uh, I saw Corey saying it's like the Twilight Zone because Mike G's on board with Bo. And I, we you know, we talk about this amongst ourselves. I have been the most – down on Bo, I I just I just don't rant as long as Mike G does. So y'all like y'all hear more from Mike? You don't. Well, you don't hear any good things I say about Bo ever, but whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I am. I have been just as negative. But the difference is, as we said all off season, we are not rooting for a player to be bad because if Bo Nix plays well, Auburn, Auburn is wins. good. Yeah, that's yeah. what we want. We are a fan channel. We want Auburn to be good. So if he's going to be the quarterback, we want him to play well. We got our wish. Bo Nix is turning into a polished quarterback before our eyes. We're not there yet. But a win wow. this weekend mm. is now for the first time since 2017 was the last time I was actually excited about our team. 2018, and these guys know this. I had seen enough. The over. SEC championship game in 17, everything was smoke and mirrors. After after that, that Georgia, the Alabama win in 17, everything after that from Gus was smoke and mirrors. And it was just a matter of time in my, in my mind. A win this weekend. We wouldn't have won because we had any part of our game that is unstoppable. There's no part of our team that the most solid part of our team is our defensive line and our run defense. And our pass defense is getting better because the line is getting more pressure. And on the back end, we're not designed to just stop people from moving the ball. So I get it. We're, we are not – this is not an 4 defense. This is not 2013 offense. This is not Cam. We don't have a singular immovable force back there Ooh. that is making us an unstoppable team. But for the first time that I can remember since probably 2004, we are so well coached. And I know what to expect when we take the field. We are prepared. We are disciplined. We are deep. And we are, our endurance is amazing, man. What our defense is doing in the second half of games, I can't remember the last time I felt like this. About knowing that when it came down to it, you know what? Halftime. That whatever they did in the first half, it's not going to go like that no more. I'm starting to believe in this team. And if I see it because I'm seeing these results, that means the coaches and the players started seeing it like three or four weeks ago. That means they picked up the pieces after Georgia and said, no, we've got something here and we're going to make the absolute best of it. It's hard for me not to think that we can do that. So all the, the bold negativity was because Bo played badly for the mm. first two years of his career in the first few games of this season. It culminated with a benching that was deserved and his play has improved. So now we are on board with him playing well, because that's what we want. We want our quarterback to play well. So I just want to say that with that being said, I got us winning because I'm starting to believe, Oh, please don't, I don't want to lose. And we look bad. That would, that would, that would crush me. I'm not going to lie. It'll be hard to see us go out there and lay an egg and fumble yeah. all over the place. I'll, I won't be off. I won't be off the train if we lose. Like, yeah, I won't. I'm, yeah. I'm never off the train, but it yeah. would hurt. It would hurt because I'm invested again. I'm invested in the mm-hmm. way I hadn't been in a while. Okay. It's just your one, though, B. It's just it's your just one. one. I know it. You got to remember. I know it. Your okay. One. All right. Oh, all right. All right. All right. It's all not right. your nine. It's your one. It's not your one. But we have an opportunity, though. Okay. See, how many years are we? It's November. The first game in November and. Everything's in our hands. Yeah. We can't always say that. And we sure. might not always be able to say that going forward. But right now, in year one of Harson, we can say that. What's your score? 
My score is 26, 20. Oh man, you oof, you close oh, to mine. Yeah, you got me. You that score is gonna have me drinking by the <laughs> third quarter. <laughs> like so, I hope you're wrong because I don't I don't want to get drunk. Saturday. I would love to have my G score. Um, I'm actually going a little tighter than that. So you're gonna be good and drunk, sloppy guys, drunk. 27, been... 23 is my score. Wow, nail biter, huh? 27, 23. Three is hey, as, as long as they have to score a touchdown at the end, that means the game is, is in their quarterback's hands. All good. I'll take it. Yeah, man. Listen, is anybody worried about Carlson? I'm not. I'm okay. No, are, no. We wor- are we worried about field goal kicking? I'm not. Ask me I'm after not. this game. Not yet. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm Ask me you. after this game. I could Ask be, me after this game. I could be wrong, but I, I think – he hasn't hit a 50 yard field goal yet this year. If he has, I don't maybe, think he has. Maybe I don't won. think he has. To, yeah, I don't I think, think he's, he has. I think he's old for whatever for, from longer than 50. Yeah. Okay. Now that worries me a little bit on the road, but you know, that's supposed to be a weapon for us. And also, too, you know, we haven't, you know, what made him so good is he had a whole lot of practice in years past. He hasn't been kicking a whole lot uh this season as compared to seasons past so mm-hmm. ask us after this game if it comes down it, special teams has to improve this 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 week we won in spite of special teams last week i'm not sure if we can i'm not sure if we can get away with special teams playing as poorly and that's something that harson and them may mention of mm-hmm. or harson may mention of in his presser this week Special teams has to improve. That's field goal kicking. That's that's kick return. That's yeah. punt return. They have to improve in all facets of the game. Do Let's guys, get some. Go ahead, Mike. Louis, do you think we see somebody different at punt return after Robertson's muff? Is that a possibility? Wait, wasn't Javaris Johnson returning some at some point? At some point, I think at they had him back there. Well, I, think it was pre- I don't think pre-season. so. Yeah, I'm not sure. I don't think so. I don't think so. If he does it again, yes, but. Mm, I don't know. I don't man. know. I don't know. Yeah, and Carlson is 0 for 2 from beyond 50. <laughs> so, if anything, you may see a change at kick return or on the kicking team, kick return they, team. They, they had Jarquez Hunter returning kickoffs. Yeah. On Saturday. Yo, there were a lot. And then Pritchett got back there a couple times. Um, they've been rotating Shivers in. Like there's a few different guys back there uh, returning returning kickoffs, but punt return. I'm telling you, that was that was a whole ass muff by Robertson. There was no reason, yeah, to no not reason catch that all. ball at all. It wasn't like it was a and it was a fair catch ball. too. Yeah, man, come on, dude, that didn't end up costing us. But uh, I, I don't want to see that again. Right, Corey Weber, drinking game Saturday, a shot for every bow completion. You up for it, Mike? Because I'm not. Well, not not with the way he's been playing recently. Maybe last year. <laughs> no, <that's laughs> this year. no. Mm. All right, I'll take no, the no. shot. I'll take a shot for every completion Bo makes beyond 20 yards. That's fair. Okay. Right. Because right. at most, that's like 10 shots, which will still have me not on the post game. But he's been about <laughs> two for five. <laughs> right. That's a couple shots. That's a couple shots for me. So I'm with you, Corey. I'm with uh, you. I'll text you while I'm doing it. I got you, number. Hilarious. Steven Nash. Say what you want about all of Bo's technical capabilities. We all know his heart rate is what will lead to a good eval of D, good footwork, and good. Touch on <laughs> he balls. You just wanted, he just wanted he to, to say touch on balls. Yeah, he rolled all that behind touch on balls. $10 in here. just to say touch on balls. <laughs> yeah. We're here for the show, <laughs> I guess. Man, listen, this is, this is, uh, this is his chance to, to really do. And, and if, if, if uh, going pro is a – realistic possibility for him he's got he can show the scout something here down the stretch yeah against this defense mm-hmm. yeah this, this a- defense on the road this will be the the biggest test he has left bama's defense they're not really that good they're okay mm-hmm. this defense is the best defense that we're gonna see for the rest of the season now yeah and if he does it against this defense man he's gonna earn himself he's gonna have a decision to make at the end of the year if he can do it against this defense yeah i can't stress enough though listen it's not all or nothing for me with his performance on saturday so even if he doesn't have a great game i won't be all out again 
because the the task that he had at hand for the turnaround was always a difficult one. It was a d- difficult statistical hill to climb. So, you know, he doesn't have to win the Heisman on Saturday. Can't stress that enough. Uh, right. So if he has an average game, uh, but protects the ball and does what he can, then I'm satisfied with that. Just you know, give, you know, put us, give us a chance to win, and uh, let the let your teammates help you and let the coaches call the right plays to put us in a good position and do the rest. That's all we need. Great. Realistic Great. expectations for him on Saturday. Listen, we'll at some point we have to uh get either Christian on or whatever to talk recruiting. Some people are asking about recruiting. Mm. We've kind of gone over kind of long to kind of really get into it, but we got to bring someone from Auburn Walmartsports.com on to kind of talk some recruiting and catch up on what's been going on on the recruiting front. But uh, we got to get out of here. Mike G, send us out with some closing announcements. Hey, sir. listen, uh, special shout out to the Commodore, JG Tate, uh, over at AuburnSports.com. They are our title sponsor for this segment. So go over there, uh, check them out for all your recruiting news. We've been dropping these uh, recruiting snippets Every week we highlight a recruit, uh, either somebody who's already signed or somebody who we're seriously prospecting. So look out for those. We're going to be dropping another one next week. Become an insider, guys. Listen, join our community. So many of you did that tonight on this broadcast. You're going to be happy that you did. We got film reviews on Monday. Uh, We had a little special treat for everybody who who joined our film review last night. So uh, I'm not going to say it out loud, but go to our go to the watch the film playlist and check that out. We went through the film last night to, to see what went right, what went wrong with Auburn. We'll be doing that again. So hopefully we're talking about what went right. But it's insider only. So if you are a supporter right now, you don't have access to that. You got to upgrade to insider. You can do that the same way you signed up. You just got to go hit upgrade. Uh, we are partnered with the Lee County Humane Society to raise money for a good cause. Uh, check out my Twitter. Uh, we started a, a daily post where we tag Tim Cook every day. Hashtag save all the puppies until we can get somebody. Somebody like tag leonardo dicaprio apparently he's known to be seen in auburn gear (laughs) it's like a thing and Mm -hmm. um you know we're just trying to get some names behind this and and get them to donate uh to the lee county humane society uh as a community we can all do a little bit of the lifting so we can do the heavy lifting together and uh put some good back into the world Uh, many of you have hit me up with pictures of your rescue animals we want to help other people find that joy uh congratulations to james barnett our raffle winner if you're a insider we're giving away tickets to the mississippi state game so become an insider we're going to raffle those off next week we're going to let you guys know who won those tickets so you're running out of time to enter that all you have to do is sign up you're automatically entered i want to thank our special segment sponsor busr busr busr.com forward slash rapport please go there sign up get an account whether you place one bet a year or maybe you just want to go look at some lines. Signing up for an account helps us so you can support us by supporting our sponsors. If you didn't win the t-shirt tonight, you can just go buy one and support us that way. Uh, the link to this, to our merch store is in our, um, our the about section of our YouTube channel. You can also get there by just going to www.thewarreport.com. It redirects right to our merch store. So go there, get your War Report gear. We love when you guys support us this way. Our podcast is live. Uh, B's working hard on this. So this is your Wednesday night war room that you can find live on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Podbean, SoundCloud, all that stuff, guys. We're all over the place. We are expanding quickly. So we appreciate everybody who goes to check us out. Subscribe, download, and leave us a five-star review and some words of kindness to help us climb those podcast charts. Indeed, indeed. Guys, as we head out, please don't forget, please be sure to share our live videos on YouTube, share them across social media, use hashtag get your weight up when you do, helps us out a ton, helps people to find great Auburn content. And also before you get out of here, get those thumbs up, please be sure to like and subscribe to our channel if you haven't done so already. You can also find us on Twitter and Instagram at The War Report. We are TW Report on TikTok. Guys, we will see you on Saturday for the game day experience. We'll see you at 2 o'clock Central Time as we preview the game, give our last thoughts before Auburn takes the field and gets that dub. But until then, guys, have a great rest of the week. And as always, War Eagles. War Eagles. War Eagles.